In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own deep research agents with your local data that are literally 10 times better than OpenAI. Why are they so much better than OpenAI? Well, because we all know that customization is key to making AI useful. And in this video, we're going to customize these agents by using four context engineering techniques. Literally, almost any business can benefit from this agent and there are a ton of ways you can price and resell it later. Like for example, you can even charge per report, which would otherwise cost hundreds of dollars in human labor from a real data analyst. So let's get started. First, as I said, this agent is going to be powered by the two new deep research models that OpenAI has just released. They also released a very cool guide on how to use deep research with MCP servers and how to add your own local data. And in this video, we're going to go over all of that. Additionally, they recently also released the web search model, which is also, of course, a pretty significant game changer for us because not only it's incredibly cheap, it's only like $10 for 1K tool calls, but it's also a tool that would otherwise would have taken you a pretty long time to develop by yourself. So in this tutorial, we're going to utilize all of this with the new version of Agency Swarm framework, which our team has recently been cooking and they have done an incredible job there. So the new version of the framework has a couple cool additions, which I'm not going to go over in this video, but the primary thing is that now it's fully based on the responses API because the new deep research models are actually only supported in responses. They're not supported in assistance or in chat completions. So our new framework is fully based on response API and it's now an extension of agents SDK. So it means that all current and future features from the agents SDK will be almost immediately supported. So as I said, I'm going to go over all of that later, but in this video, we're going to focus on deep research models and you'll find the repo below in the description where we have a few examples. So in this repo, first of all, we have the basic research agent which is essentially just one agent powered by the O4 mini model. And we also have a multi-agent research. And the multi-agent research is the exact copy of OpenAI Deep Research, but of course you can fully customize it for yourself. So it contains three agents, number one, a clarifying agent, number two, an instruction builder agent, and also the research agent itself. So let's jump into this repo and let me show you how to actually use it. So make sure you clone this repo and after that, make sure you create a virtual environment and install all of the packages. If you run into any issues on any step of the way, make sure to ask cursor or windsurf and it should be able to help you and even generate detailed commands. Okay, after that, make sure that you added your OpenAI key right here and the rest of the environment variables you don't really need. But if you want to specify your own vector store ID on OpenAI, you can also do that. If you want to create your own vector store, you can easily do it from the playground. However, if you don't have that, it's not a problem because of course this repo will create it automatically for you. So now let's go over the first example, which is the basic research agency. So this agency consists only out of one agent and this agent has a simple web search tool and then also a hosted MCP tool. So the hosted MCP tool is actually a new addition to OpenAI API. As you guys might know, OpenAI has recently supported the MCP protocol directly, which is honestly a pretty significant thing because now it symbolizes that OpenAI has actually accepted MCP as the new standard in the industry. So this hosted MCP tool actually does not call your MCP server locally. This tool actually calls it remotely. So this means that the request to your MCP server will actually be going from OpenAI servers, not from our local machine. And this means that essentially you can't run any STD IO servers or any servers that you're running locally. You can only run servers that are hosted somewhere on the internet. Currently, deep research models do not support any other types of servers. They only support hosted MCP tools. They actually also have this guide called Building MCP Servers for Deep Research. And in this server, you actually are only allowed to have two tools. The first tool is the search tool and the second tool is a fetch tool. And also it has a dedicated list of parameters. So we've already created this server for you, which you can find under the MCP folder. And essentially, this server just recreates the file search tool by OpenAI. So basically, all it does is it just uses OpenAI's vector stores in order to search and fetch various files. And all you need to do to use the server is simply add 
your files into the files folder and that's it. So let me actually show you how to do this now. So first make sure you activate the virtual environment. And after that, simply run this python mcp start mcp server.py command. Now, as you can see, our server has started. However, as I said before, this server has to be hosted on the internet. You can't actually connect to a server on your local host URL because the request is going to be made from OpenAI site, not from your machine, right? So in order for us to use that server with OpenAI, we actually have to also expose it via ngrok. So if you don't have ngrok installed, it's also pretty simple setup. All you need to do is just basically sign up on ngrok.com and then here on the dashboard, they're gonna have all of the setup instructions. The setup is pretty simple. All you need to do is just literally run two commands and that's it. And after that, open a second terminal and then in that terminal, simply run and grok HTTP and then the port of your server. Awesome, so now as you can see, our server is exposed on the internet and we can copy this URL right here and then we can simply add it into our env file. And at the end, also don't forget to add SSE. Awesome, now let's open another terminal and now let's run the basic research agency. So all you need to do is just run Python and then basic research agency, agency.py. Also, if you wanna visualize this agency first, we have this visualize method in the new framework version, which if you run it, will show you an interactive dashboard with all of the tools and all of the agents in your agency. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, so as I said, the team has been cooking. Now let's actually run the run agency demo method. All right, so now as you can see, the agency is running. And since this is a very basic research agency, it's just going to take our query and then run the deep research model right away. So let me just say, what is context engineering in AI? Also, sorry, one more thing before I actually run this is I want to add a maximum tool calls parameter because as I said, these models actually run for tens of minutes and I don't want to wait for so long. So I'm going to add a new parameter, model settings. And then in these model settings, I'm going to add a max tool calls parameter and set it, say, to eight. Don't forget to add an import. And now we should be good to go. Okay, so as you can see, the basic research agent starts to perform web searches with the term context engineering in AI. As you can see, it searched GitHub, it searched the news, and it also searched archive. Okay, and now around three minutes later, as you can see, it starts to generate the report itself. After the report is generated, it saves it into the reports directory. So this repo actually also saves all of your reports in PDF format, so you can easily share it with others. So let's open this report, and as you can see, this is what it looks like. Amazing, right? So the report is super well formatted. We have the query on top, then we have all of the formatting in place using Markdown and all of the references on the bottom. So this is amazing. I mean, this is already like super valuable. I'm actually really curious to read it and it has all of the key techniques as well, like rack, memory, prompt chaining and context pruning. So now let me show you the second agency and then I'm gonna show you how to actually customize it and build it for your own specific use case. So the second agency is called the deep research agency and this one, as I said, consists out of three agents. So it has number one, a research agent, number two, an instruction builder agent and number three, a clarifying agent. And this is super powerful because not only this agency clarifies your questions, but it actually makes a super comprehensive and detailed prompt that would have taken you quite a while to write by yourself. Oh, and actually it also has a triage agent, which essentially just routes all of the requests to other agents accordingly. Each agent also has their own specific instructions files, which I will show you how to customize in a bit. So let's quickly also check how this works. I'm also gonna add the max tool calls to the research agent because I don't want it to run for 30 minutes for this demo. I will, however, run the last agent, which will be my framework analyzer agent for as long as needed. So let's run this file. You can also just hit run Python file here on top. And now if I ask this agent, what is context engineering in AI? 
it doesn't actually just start researching right away. Instead, it hands off the request to the clarifying agent. And now the clarifying agent is asking me what specifically am I most interested in. So let's say that I'm interested in the techniques and understanding how to use it to build AI agents. However, this is not the last question. As you can see, after I provided the answer to the first question, it also asks me another question, which is, would I like the technical details or examples or just a high level explanation? And the reason it does this is because the clarifying agent actually uses structured outputs in order to generate those questions. So as you can see here, the output type is set to this model clarifications, which is a list of questions. And then the demo method actually parses all of these questions and asks them one by one from the user. And now that I answered all of these three questions, it finally switches to the instruction builder agent, which builds this super comprehensive large prompt, as you can see right here, which would have taken me quite a while to write by myself. And then it switches to the finally research agent, which starts the research. Okay, so let's check out the next report. So this research, as you can see, is like 10 times better. It actually has all of the specific code snippets, just as I requested. It also even has a comparison table with all of the techniques and frameworks outlining all of the practical use cases. And of course, the references on the bottom. Now, let me actually show you how you can customize this agent for your specific business or use case. So the process is honestly pretty simple. This repo contains pretty much everything that you'll need. So all you need to do is just simply hit copy on the deep research agency, or you can of course use a simpler template with just one agent if you want, and then simply paste it in the root directory, just like this. Then rename this agency into whatever agency that you want to build. And the next step after you copied this agency is to actually add your files. So for my files, what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the framework docs. And then if the framework is using a modern documentation platform, typically there's always this LLMs-full.txt file. So this URL provides the full documentation for large language models. As you can see, this is absolutely massive. We also have that for our framework. And I suppose that all other frameworks have as well. So let me just copy all of these files and then put them into the files directory. Okay, so I've added four framework documentations in files for agency swarm, crew AI, LangGraph, and Pydenic AI. And the next step is to actually copy the MCP server. So you don't have to actually do that. You can, you know, get a lot of value just by adding your own instructions and custom files and also customizing the agency structure. But if you want to connect your own custom MCP to deep research, what you can do is also do the same for the MCP folder. So just hit copy, then hit paste, and then rename it for your specific server. So I'm going to create a GitHub MCP server that will allow me to search and fetch files from these frameworks from GitHub, just so the deep research agent can actually analyze them and suggest some code improvements. And then simply open the server.py file and prompt the agent to customize this MCP to your needs. So you can use any coding assistant, like for example, Cloud Code, Cascade, or Cursor, or Gemini CLI. Additionally, in your prompt, make sure to specify that the input and output parameters must stay exactly the same. Okay, so as you can see, Claude made quite a few changes here. And it also tells me that we need to install additional package. So let's accept both. And now I think we can test this server. Also, don't forget to add your GitHub token if you are building a similar agent. So now let's run the start MCP server command and see if it works. So also don't forget to change the port. Okay, and now, yeah, as you can see, our server is actually running on the first attempt. Cool, so let's actually do another ngrok. Okay, so let's copy this new URL. And then let's add this as a new hosted MCP tool 
in a research agent and also insert our URL. Perfect, so now our agent is almost set up and I actually also wanna just remove the web search tool because I don't think we're gonna need it since the agent can just search the GitHub files directly. So now we are almost ready to run our agent. The last step is to simply adjust the instructions. In your instructions, just make sure to add the business overview and all of the details of the research task that you wanna perform. Instructions are actually super important and I suggest writing them like you would write an essay. So not using AI too much, although you can use AI to format them. So let me just do this right now and then I'll get back to you and we can actually test this agent. Okay, so now I finished writing the instructions. As you can see in the clarifying agent, I just clarified the specific context, like for example, the context about our framework and also which specific clarifying questions to ask the user. Make sure to tailor it for your use case. And in the instruction builder agent, it's actually super important to specify that the agent must generate instructions and then transfer them to the research agent. And as you can see, the instructions themselves also contain the context of our framework and then also the specific guidelines, like what I actually want to research, like for example, the missing features, the business context, the quality standards, and so on. And in the last research agent, you actually don't have to specify any instructions at all because the research agent will simply be given the instructions by the instruction builder agent. So the research agent itself only has one sentence in instructions, which is to you know, perform deep empirical research. Perfect, so now let's actually run this agency. I haven't even specified the max number of tool calls. So this is gonna take quite a while, but I'm super excited to see what it's gonna come up with. Okay, so now let me answer the clarifying questions. So as you can see next, the instructions agent generated this super comprehensive prompt. And finally, it switched to the research agent, which now kicked off the research. So this is probably gonna take like at least 20 minutes, I suppose. So I'm just gonna chill and uh, get back to you later. Okay, so over 20 minutes and over 32 calls later, the research is finally completed. So let's check it out. So this report contains over 18 pages in PDF. It says that Agency Swarm lacks the graph abstraction and no built-in UI or DSLI for workflow definition. That's actually true, we're planning to work on that. Uh, it also says that we could improve modularity and testing, which we already have done in a new version. Right now, Deep Research is just using the old version. In a new version, we actually have over 200 tests. Now, the strategic recommendation is that we should add formal workflow layer, which is absolutely true, we're working on that. As I said, we will definitely be adding workflow layer very soon. Um, and in strengths of the framework, it says that it's super lightweight, exactly what I always say, you know, the, our framework is the most lightweight framework out there. It also proposed an architecture pattern with the act from Langgraph method. And finally, it also provided some more recommendations, like for example, integrate memory and improve concurrency. So we already did improve the concurrency and memory right now you have to create manually, but we will definitely add this feature in the next version where you will be able to use it out of the box. So this is incredibly helpful. As I said, this report can easily cost hundreds of dollars. I mean, to generate something like this with human effort would have taken me, I don't know, probably like multiple days. And if you are working with clients who are extremely heavy on data, like for example, marketing agencies, I think they would just immensely benefit from something like this. If you create an MCP that allows the deep research agent to actually search through all of their previous campaigns, through all of the data that they have available in their company, like for example, their customer details, I think this would be just absolutely invaluable. And if you wanna see our no code updated agent building process using our platform, which is also built on top of our framework, then make sure to watch this video next. We have some really massive updates coming up soon and soon you will even be able to deploy agents like this directly from your GitHub repos and then integrate them directly into your clients' businesses. So thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.